Kanzan Kanichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Bard, keep bringing you episode 176 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. Well, you know what, patrons? Power Rangers Turbo really wasn't all that bad. Yeah, I know, shocking. That's a very unpopular opinion with most people, but we're no strangers to that here at the Tavern. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. I, I had to go back and watch a few episodes of Turbo in preparation for this podcast. And before we actually get into the meat of this, I just want to go ahead and say, I think the hate for Turbo is probably overrated. Now, looking back at the time, yes, we had just gotten comfortable with Power Ranger Zeo, everything was great, it ended on a good episode, which we didn't realize was, was the last episode of Zeo at the time. We had the second feature film came out, which was a little underwhelming. Then the series started shaking up the status quo in a way that, well, we just weren't prepared for. Getting rid of Zordon, Alpha, um, Ernie, turning Bulk and Skull into chimps, getting rid of Tommy, Rocky, Adam, Aisha, Cat, uh, Jason nowhere to, to be seen, and you know Rocky being replaced by a 12-year-old. and it, it's, it was just, I think, too much for us to assimilate at that time given what we had in the first four previous seasons. So yeah, it left a bad taste in our mouth because we just weren't prepared for it. We weren't expecting what it was trying to go ahead and do. Now, am I saying that what they were doing was good? No, a lot of the decisions they made were quite asinine, and from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, you just really have to, to question those motives. But again, in the 19 years since the show first aired... We've certainly had worse Power Ranger seasons. Look at Megaforce and RPM uh, for good examples of that. Uh, we've certainly had worse Rangers than Justin. Uh, we've had worse villains than Divatox. And, you know, as far as annoying sidekick characters go, I think there are a few more annoying characters than Alpha 6 was at this time. The point is, the show was not all that bad. Worse things have come out, and I think people give it too much crap, and I think it is because of Justin. Because, you know what? If it wasn't for Justin, if Rocky had stayed on, and then we completely changed out to five new Rangers, and say maybe that new Blue Ranger was an adult, I think people would look back on it with a little bit more fondness, maybe. Um, okay, but to today's topic, because again, I had to go watch a couple of videos here, and I think Turbo had some good ideas buried in there. And I don't know whose idea this is, whether it was the writer, the producer, series creator, whoever. Some Somebody had this idea. And that was the concept of the Millennium Message. And, you know, here, here's the thing. It's an odd thing to think about from both an in-story and out-story perspective. Because it seems to be, from our story, it was the impetus to set up certain changes in the series, whereas the end series, it was, you know, clues to an upcoming threat, a great disaster. And, and it was supposed to, you know, be, be that, first, that, that first little breadcrumb, I, I guess, before we got up to what the big reveal was. Okay, so for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, or it's been a long time since you've seen this, let me kind of reiterate and go over what the Millennium Message is. Uh, well, first of all, it's an episode of Power Rangers Turbo, which revolves around the, the titular Millennium Message. Uh, an intergalactic robotic police officer by the name of the Blue Centurion comes to Earth in search of uh, Demetria, but he ends up getting intercepted by Divatox and reveals this message. That in the year 2000, the combined forces of Zed, Rita, the Machine Empire, and Divatox will go ahead and conquer the galaxy and divide up amongst themselves. But there is hope, as there is one force that stands in their way of total domination. And that force is unseen to us, the audience, unseen to the Rangers, because the Rangers actually don't get that part of the message. Only Divatox knows what's going on. And thus, this sets up for some greater threat down the line where Divatox and the others will eventually uh, gather together to conquer the universe um, and set event, certain events the uh, Divatox would fulfill to make sure that the Millennium Message does not come to pass, which is her exact words in the next episode, A Drive to Win. Now, again, it's kind of an odd thing from both in-story and out-of-story perspective. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about out-of-story, because here's where it gets a little 
iffy, and I really have no proof on, on what I'm about to, to go ahead and say. We do know that Power Rangers Turbo's ratings was pretty bad at this particular time, and the ratings did get better after this episode, after the hiatus, and once they did switch over to TJ uh, and the others. And what we do know is that the budget was scaled back for Power Rangers in Space, and Power Rangers in Space, the sixth season, was meant to be the final season of Power Rangers, but of course that se season was so successful that they continued with it. I suspect that the Millennium Message, at this point in time in the series, because of the low ratings, was to get the audience excited about a potential threat that was coming up to make them tune in to want to watch what exactly is going to go ahead and happen. Because consider, you get a new, a new character that's introduced, a new, a new ally who comes with his own Zord from the future, no less, and we'll discuss that a little bit more when I talk about in-story uh, problems with that. And then he talks about the return of some very famous and very popular characters. Because at this point, Rita, hadn't been, Rita and Zed had not been seen since the Turbo movie, which was a cameo appearance. And to our knowledge, the Machine Empire was destroyed at the end of Zeo by Zed and Rita. So to tease the fact that all five of these villains, or excuse me, uh, well, they show Machina in the image, but that these three factions of villains, let's put it that way, these three factions of villains would be teaming up at somewhere down the line, well, that's going to keep viewers interested in what's going to happen next within the story. Now, I also suspect this is where they were going to do the cast change, or they knew that some new characters were coming, because, again, in the next episode of Drive to Win, this is where uh, we are introduced to the characters of Ashley and Carlos, who Divatox is specifically targeting to, to, to kill them, to destroy them with the detonator at a soccer game, as, as you do. So, from the out story, they're like, okay, we got to set up this great event that's going to tease the audience about Rangers, uh, villains coming together, something's going to stand their way, and since they already had the Mega Ranger footage, they probably knew what that was going to go ahead and be, and they knew they were going to get some new Rangers, so let's introduce Carlos and Ashley and tie them into the Millennium message. However, the odd thing is, this is the last time that the Millennium Message would actually be mentioned within the series. Only two instances. The episode in which it was introduced, and the episode in which Carlos and Ashley are introduced. After this point, it's never mentioned again. Not in the second half of Turbo, never in Power Rangers in space, not again. So, my question is, what was the whole purpose of introducing the Millennium Message if you were not going to actually follow up on it. Now, true, they did follow up on certain events in the series, particularly that the five factions united. That's the impetus for Power Rangers in space, and the whole reason Divatox leaves at the end of the season. But they didn't seem to have anything else planned out. They had, okay, something stands in our way, that's going to be the Space Rangers. We're going to do with that next season. We're going to introduce two new characters, which we're going to switch over, which is why they're being targeted, um, and it's going to lead to some big event. That's pretty much all they seem to have, because there wasn't any other clues. There wasn't anything else that was going on, because, again, the Rangers never mention again, and Blue Centurion's entire purpose for being there to give them this message becomes an afterthought, and he just becomes a permanent fixture in the power chamber. You know, he's there to help the Rangers, but he's not there to do anything else. So I'm really kind of confused on why they introduced this, supposedly to uh, promote hype for the series to bring the ratings back up, but they never followed through with anything else until you got the Power Rangers in space, but then you can argue that the Millennium Message was not necessary for that, that you could excise the entire Millennium Message thing and everything else kind of continues on the, the way that it needs to. Now, let's actually go ahead and talk about the Millennium Message within the context of a show, because there's just a lot of things that I really don't get. First of all, let's address the time travel issue. I really hate time travel, and if it were up to me, I don't think Power Rangers would ever do any time travel plots ever again, because they're too messy, they're too complicated, if you don't know what the hell that you're doing, you're going to create problems, and frankly, in 23 years of Power Rangers, the writers really don't know what they're doing, um, and, and we just really need to stop with, with time travel. If you want to do more Time Force stuff and bring them back into the fold, okay, that's fine, but... 
unless you're Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale working at time travel, you really shouldn't be dealing with this type of stuff. And yes, time travel is theoretical, and any story that you do is kind of a crapshoot, but Power Rangers is just a real bad example about time loops and causality and paradoxes. It's, it, it just doesn't make a, a lot of sense. Okay, but again, it, it deals with time travel. The Blue Centurion says that his message originates from the year 2000, and he's come back in time to deliver this message. Okay, so let's assume a couple of things based on this. And again, with the iffy time travel and Power Rangers, it's hard, but let's go by you know, logical time travel. In order for him to have come back, there had to have been a timeline in which he did not come back to deliver the Millennium Message. In this unaltered timeline, or this original timeline, as you will, these these three factions got together, conquered the universe, and then were defeated by a team of Power Rangers. I, at least that's what I'm assuming that was in the image. It has to be the Space Rangers. I couldn't imagine it be anything else at this point. Also keep in mind that Power Rangers Turbo took place in 1997, meaning that four years from that date is when the Blue Centurion came back. So again, at some point between 1997 and 2000, these events all happen. Now, we do know they happened in the year 1998 in our current Power Ranger timeline, uh, but there is speculation that these things did happen in the year 2000. But I will go ahead and point out that, the, that in the episode, it says the message origin originates from the year 2000, not that the Blue Centurion himself comes from the year 2000 or that these events happen in the year 2000. Let's go ahead and make that clear. Let's also point out that the Blue Centurion has what's called an estimated future file. When he is starting his projection for uh, Divatox, it says estimated future file. Now that raises a couple of concerns here for me because if it's an estimated future file, then does it mean it actually happened? Shouldn't it be historical data? Shouldn't it be something along those lines or, or file records? Why is it estimated future file? Is it because he's in the past and thus all his records are subject to changes in the time stream? Because th that seems very inefficient that he would go back and his data would would be uh, changed here. You know, when he when he, when he goes back into the past. Uh, but again, let, let's let's look at where where the the timeline goes here. Something happens. There is no blue centurion in this timeline. Let's let's make that clear. They take over and the Space Rangers defeat them. And again, it's phrased in a way that they've already conquered the galaxy and the Space Rangers have saved the day. Because the Blue Centurion, his job is an intergalactic officer of the peace sent from the future. Okay? So that tells me if he's working for good, because D Divatox reprograms him for evil in this episode, or at least reprograms him to think that Power Rangers are villains as opposed to heroes, that means everything turned out okay. Everything turned out hunky-dory. That evil took over, the Power Rangers came in, stopped them, and then later we had some intergalactic police force that's now patrolling our galaxy or neighboring galaxies, uh... Because here's what I'm not understanding uh, about why the Blue Centurion was sent back in time. If the Rangers defeated him and everything is okay, what is the point of going back in time to tell them, oh, everything turned out just fine, no hurry, no, 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 no big deal? Because to me, it, it's kind of like going back in time to World War II and, you know, delivering to, to the president, basically saying, oh, in three years, this war is going to be over, just to let, and we win, just to let you know. I mean, everything turned out good, everything is fine, but you're going back in time and potentially jeopardizing that to just give them the good news. Be, because... That's that's where we have run into the problem here, because the Blue Centurion going back in time potentially alters history, and frankly, it looks like it does alter history, because once the Rangers get a hold of him, he tries to play the estimated file future, and what you'll notice is that in the, in the original image, it was 
from left to right going Machina, Mondo, Zed, Rita, and Divatox. But now, when he plays the message for the Rangers, it's Machina, Mondo, Divatox in the center, Zed, and Rita, and it's positioned in a way in which Divatox seems to be at the forefront. Now, that indication is, is that because Divatox now knows about the future, that they will unite, and that there is some greater threat going, you know, that there's this threat that stands in the way of the villains, that she has planned and prepared for this, and thus she is now leader of that evil faction. Which, of course, is BS, because we know it was orchestrated by Dark Spectre, but the Millennium Message uh, conveniently leaves that part of it out, which would be one of the most crucial pieces of information, I would say. So again, we go back in time to warn us of something that we will defeat with no problem, but because Divatox is now aware of it, she can now plan for it, which is her plan in the following episode, where she attempts to assassinate Carlos and Ashley before they can become Power Rangers and thus stop the event. But also, let's think about this. What exactly did Blue Centurion change by his presence just being there? Because, again, some people interpret this as the invasion took place in the year 2000. At no point does it say in the year 2000, only that the message originates from the year 2000. And I listened for that uh, in the episode. But at no point did it say that the invasion happens in the year 2000. If he doesn't go back, we know that Divatox never finds out Carlos and Ashley that there is no Blue Centurion. Now, of course, I would assume that events in the episode play out normally, because when we get to Turbo Final, uh, Blue Centurion played absolutely no role in, in defeating Gold Goyle, and that was something the Rangers did. And part of the reason that the Rangers fail at the end and, and, the, command, and the power chamber is destroyed is because Blue Centurion and Demetria leave, that they don't have any additional allies or reinforcements to protect the power chamber. So his presence was vital, but the way he's written in the series is that if he was never there, then, you know, everything kind of turns out. I mean, if we assume that this does take place in the year 2000, that that's when the events happen, how does the Blue Centurion's presence actually escalate matters to where it happens in 1998? And frankly, Divatox knowing about what happens doesn't gel with the rest of the series. Sure, she knows Carlos and Ashley are there, and she can go ahead and kill them, along with TJ and Cassie, but she never makes that attempt until they do become Power Rangers. Um... But this doesn't affect Dark Spectre's plans whatsoever, because if we take Blue Centurion and what Divatox knows out of the equation, the two main things that were changed, Dark Spectre still would have shown up at the end of the season whether the power chamber would have been destroyed or not. The messenger would have still came, told her to come to the Sumerian planet, and she would have been gone. And what would we have had in that place? We would have had the Turbo Rangers still protecting Earth. Okay, now that I think about it, Possibly, if she didn't defeat the Turbo Rangers and the, the guy left, then Earth was protected by the Turbo Rangers, and thus Dark Spectre had to wait for his invasion of the rest of the galaxy. Because, of course, the Rangers would have never gone into space, never would have forced his hand with Astronema and the Psycho Rangers to force that. Okay, so now that does make a little bit of sense, now that I have actually uh, thought it out and said it out loud. You know, this is this podcast really helps me, guys, because you think about things you, you never think of before. Okay. But also, let's bring up this little tidbit of information as well. Now, Demetria asks in the episode, why would someone travel between galaxies uh, to, to come and see us? So the implication is, is that the Blue Centurion is from another galaxy. And actually, Adam does have dialogue later in the episode where Zordon had said to him that the Blue Centurions, which are a large force of robots, are the most reliable form of law enforcement in eight galaxies. So the implication by those two lines of dialogue is that, indeed, other galaxies are being conquered, and, and, and you know, it, this is far-reaching that doesn't involve just our little backwater berg that involves everybody else. But Alpha-6 says that what caused the earthquake at the beginning of the episode was an interdimensional warp within the atmosphere. Interdimensional, as in traveling between dimensions. So is it possible the Millennium Message is not from our future 
per se, but from an alternate future, much in the same way that Spock and Nero went back into an alternate timeline and not the Prime Universe timeline in Star Trek. Because I imagine that's got to be the most likely scenario is that the Blue Centurion came from another dimension and w was trying to warn his timeline about what was coming, but instead went to this timeline and warned them. Because, again, it, it doesn't necessarily gel up with what we're, we're getting here. And again, I don't understand why you would send someone back in time to warn of a future that comes out positive. I mean, okay, again, let's... I'm going to give a better example here, guys, because that World War II example sucked. But what's the whole point of Terminator, or at least the first couple of movies? Kyle Reese goes back to stop the Terminator from killing uh, Sarah Connor. Now, the reason that the machines sent the first Terminator back is because they were losing the war, and this was a way for them to win the war. Now, imagine if the machines did win the war... And still sent Terminator back anyway. Yeah, we won, humanity's dead and everything, but just to be on the safe side, let's go back and alter history as well. You know? Or, what if Kyle Reese was sent back and there was no Terminator and his job was to protect Sarah Connor, even though there was no threat to to send them back for. You get, guys get what I'm trying to, to, to point out here, is that from the information we're given, is it's possible Blue Centurion is from another dimension altogether. He comes from a future that's already peaceful, that we don't need to warn anybody about, and the information he has is estimated and not actual fact. But, of course, one can argue that, you know, I don't give a damn about your future because it, I don't give a damn about your past because it's my future. Something Picard said. <laughs> um, but I, I just don't, I, I don't get this from, from multiple perspectives. Because, again, I don't understand why this was introduced in the series if they were never actually going to directly follow up with it. Because we all assume the countdown to destruction is what he meant. It's never, ever been stated within the conicity of the series that the Millennium Message was indeed tied into Dark Spectre's invasion from Countdown to Destruction. There was absolutely no evidence linking that. And there has never been any confirmation from the creators about that. And there's never been confirmation that what Blue Centurion actually saw was the Space Rangers. Again, that's speculation on my part and everybody else's part. I've never heard of anybody say what he actually saw in there. Now, it would have been interesting if we could have seen the Space Rangers, at least from an obscure uh Perspe uh, perspective, because they had the Mega Ranger footage, they could have done it. They had the Mega Ranger costumes, most likely. Nevertheless, the whole Millennium Message thing just really kind of bugs me from both in and out of universe. And, and it's just because I'm not saying they didn't care about it, but they just didn't follow through with what they were planning to do. Even if they thought Power Rangers Space was their final season, you could play up the rest of the series, the Millennium Message, the prophecy that's coming, and it could be a legit prophecy because you have somebody who came from the future to warn you, and this is how you get ratings, because you can see the teasers. What will become of the Millennium Message? Uh, will this tie into it? You could have had an entire story arc around this, how history is being changed, what's being altered, because the worst that could have happened from this was that Divatox killed Carlos and Ashley. They wouldn't have been Rangers, but, again, given the context of the series, we could have gotten anybody else to be Power Rangers, and it probably wouldn't have been any different. Plus, at this time, it was before they did the Ranger change, and I would assume if Cassie and Carlos had, uh, or excuse me, Ashley and Carlos had been killed, uh, that Adam and Tanya would have picked two other representatives, and I don't think it was Destiny that Carlos and Ashley got picked, nor was Destiny that those five particular Rangers would save uh, the universe. Uh, again, really, the interesting thing about Power Rangers in space, it all comes down to the relationship between a brother and a sister. Uh, which is profound and, and really good. Okay, so as usual, I've really gone off topic here, and I, I've gone all over the place with this, but I like to think you guys got the gist of, of what I'm trying to go ahead and say here. Um, so what do you guys think? What's your opinion uh, on the Millennium Message, uh, both in and out story? Was it something we should have followed up with? Was it something you were confused about? Is it something that you forgot about until I just now mentioned it to you? Uh, leave some comments below. I'd really like to know what you guys think about it. Uh, but that's all I got. So until next time, thank you for listening. 
have a good evening, and the tavern is now closed.